George Kilpatrick, Inspiration for the Nation, celebrating people we feel good about. We are so pleased to be joined by the president of the 100 Black Men, Drake Harrison, and the director of community engagement at Syracuse Stage, Joanne Yarrow. So glad that both of you have joined us. The 100 Black Men and Syracuse Stage have partnered to do something pretty special, especially at a time like this. 100 Conversations for Change, and we're really excited about this project that has already begun, and there's gonna be some great opportunities for you to learn more about what they're doing. Let me start with you, Joanne. Tell me about this partnership with the 100. So um, this, I think, just kind of grew out. Drake and I have always been talking about, you know, ideas for what we can do to partner, and this was an amazing idea that Drake had come up with, and, you know, I, and I, we said, well, what do you need? How can I help you with this idea? And so um, they were looking at filming it, and I said, well, we're, we can't do anything in our theater right now. It's COVID, yeah. <laughs> right? We can't have any audience. We can't, you know, and it's a really big space. It might be the perfect space to come and film these conversations. So um, Drake has, you know, the magic connections, and so he was able to reach out to some amazing guests. And um, Black Cub Productions, who Drake also works with is someone that also works at Syracuse Stage. So it was kind of all in the family. It felt, mm -hmm. you know, when things just feel right and the stars align. So it was really great to see something that, you know, 100 Black Men is doing and just to be able to give it as much support as we can. All right, so Drake, so what was the idea that you had that you had to partner with Joanne uh, to get this going? What was the seed of it? What was the impetus? What was the the germ of it yeah the seed yeah. of it however you want to call it <laughs> how'd you come up with it brother <laughs> <laughs> so at, at first you know it, it was a, a work in progress you know mm -hmm. it, it was an idea you know that that uh, the organization gave birth to and then what we wanted to do is we wanted to make sure that it's conversations but we wanted to make sure that you know the quality was there that people can actually get into the conversation and not focus on you know, erratic, uh, uh, you know, uh, motion in terms of, you know, the quality of the video and the sound of the video and all of that, because people will focus on those things because those things are uh, up front. And, and you'll see that first before you can get in a conversation. So right. when, I talk to, when I talked to Joanne and Black Cub, I said, well, listen, let's bring in the people with the expertise and skills mm -hmm. to eradicate all those technical issues right. so we can focus on the actual conversation mm -hmm. to help change in central new york and that was the idea and the birth of the relationship between syracuse stage and black cub by the way which is an all-black production company yeah they um in fact they're also the produce they work with uh, jo johanna rogers for behind mm -hmm. the woman on uh, wcny and congratulations to them they got a second season yay and mm -hmm. um so drake what, what what were the what are the conversations that you think we ought to be having uh, about change and what, what, what do we, well, let me go back. What do we need to change? What, uh, what do we need to change? Everything. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to ask the same of you, Joanne. What do we, what needs to so, change? And, and what is, what are the, what are the conversations at which we need to have about that? So Syracuse is a microcosm of the larger country, right? Mm -hmm. We are a small to medium sized city, but we're not immune to the challenges that the rest of the nation faces. You know, in terms of inadequacies, you know, police reform, um, you know, prison reform, education, um, economic inequity, mm -hmm. you know, uh, health health disparities. So we're we're no different. We're smaller, but we're facing some of the same issues that the larger cities are facing. Mm -hmm. So what I said was, why why don't we, after the when the Black Lives Matter movement started and the forty days of marching started. My, the question arose, then what? And then what? And then what? Mm -hmm. So we said, why don't we participate in that then what mm -hmm. part of it? Well, we, so what we decided to do was we will hold conversations with leadership that sit in spaces and sit in positions to actually implement change in their organizations and companies. So it was, you know, not casting any, you know, thing along middle management, but we knew at the highest levels, if they agreed to make change, then that will permeate throughout the organization and the companies that we were talking to. So we decided to focus on leadership 
and influencers. Because mm-hmm. these same people not only have, you know, leadership within their companies, but they are influencers in the wider community. Right, right. So yeah. we're saying if we can get them on board to do that and then sign uh, letters or enter, I should say, enter into MOUs, memorandums of understanding with the organization to implement those changes, then we could we could actually move the needle. And, and so Joanne, uh, obviously we think of the arts, we think of theater, we think of the stage as a place where a lot of impact w- that can have, uh, as a place where uh, uh, sometimes that theater can tell the stories that we aren't able to do face to face. In other words, we can see a play and it can provoke us to think about uh, some of the issues or the play presents or the music presents uh, the issues in such a way that it, it causes us to have deeper level conversations. I'm sure that that's part of the reason why you wanted to be involved in a project like this. And so, so what are we learning uh, as a result of this? Well, exactly like you say, the, the stage is also a place for the community to have a voice. Mm-hmm. And that's a real important aspect of you know, what our commitment is to the community. Right. Not enough to just kind of give you a play and it's all really insular and you go home. And the people that you see on the stage don't really affect your everyday life, right? It might be a good idea. It might be a powerful message. And all of those things are wonderful. But it's another thing to have people in the community on their stage, on the stage and, and having a voice and feeling that they're on a stage and, and having a voice. And when it comes to working in theater and in the arts and with the community, a lot of what we do is, you know, kind of distill the gems, distill the, the most important meaning, meaning out of a lot of noise. Because there's a lot of noise out there in the world right now. And people are just so tired. They don't know what to listen to anymore. Right. They don't know what's true anymore. And they're just being bombarded right and left with noise, noise, noise. And we really get a chance to kind of what in these conversations specifically get really quiet mm-hmm. and listen and lean mm-hmm. in and and look at these human beings and see what they have to say, which I think is an honor. So this week you released the first set of conversations for change. Who who are we meeting this week? So this week is Andre Frank, the president of Frontline Care at Hillon Corporation in Skinny Atlas. Okay. Mayor Ben Walsh. Right, uh, Senator Rachel May, and last but not least is Police Chief Ken Buckner. Oh, just nobody, right? Nobody important. Just you know, <laughs> some people y'all just <laughs> from around the way, right? That I get. That's a good leadership group. That's a very good leadership group, especially at a time like this, right? You know, you got the economic piece, you've got you know governmental, you've got police, and you've got municipal. So yeah, that's good list. Good list of folk. And so people go to the website and they can look at the videos. And then this week coming up, what, what what's happening this week coming up? Well, so, oh, go ahead, go ahead, Jermaine. Yeah, on the 8th, um, Drake is going to be there and he's inviting all of these guests. Um, so Syracuse Stage has, we have this online uh, Zoom, which is a community conversation called Syracuse Stories, because mm-hmm. it is local to us, what mm-hmm. Drake said. And um, Drake will be there and I will be moderating questions from mm-hmm. the public. So oh. we're inviting the public, you do have to reserve a ticket. It's, it's free, mm-hmm. but we do wanna, you know, um, reserve, have you reserve a ticket. And, um, you know, there's a chat so people can chat in and then people can ask questions of these leaders that um, is important to them and hopefully they'll, they'll get an answer. And that's really the question, right? Will they get the answer, right? Because a lot of times, sometimes, especially if leaders, we're not, we get sort of ideas, but we don't get the answer, right? Uh, and a lot of, you know, a lot of it is a lot of uncertainty. You know, we have obviously the COVID and the impact of COVID on, uh, on every facet of society, you know, whether it's mental health, whether it's financial health, uh, there's a lot of stress and anxiety in our community recognized and unrecognized. And so, you know, we're hoping that there are some answers uh, to, to some of those things. And I think about, I, I want you guys to comment on this, each one of you, about the community and where we're at, because I'm really proud of our little city, and I'll tell you why. Because, and, 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 and still we have a lot of work to do, so don't take me out of context here. But, you know, 
right, you're having this conversation. And then there's the book group for, for Just Mercy with the Bar Association. And then there's another book group with um, the uh, James Baldwin book group, you know, that's happening, whether you know that. I'm just, maybe I'm telling that to some people. But, you know, Syracuse University is doing a book group with James Baldwin. You've got the community-wide uh, book read of Just Mercy. Is it just me? Are we trying to do some work in this community? And then we also have the 21-day racial equity challenge that's underway right now with the United Way and the YWCA. So we, are we trying to do uh, that? It may be a rhetorical question, so maybe I ask it this way. What kind of work are we trying to do in this community? Joanne, I'll start with you. Um, I think that we are, we are being given permission to, do, to shift and have those changes that we've always known mm. were the correct thing to do. Mm -hmm. um, I think we're, you know, there's, there's a great saying is that when somebody really wants something, they go after it, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And otherwise, they just make a ton of excuses. Yeah. And so we're, what you're seeing is people are not giving excuses anymore. Hmm. They're actually doing it. And right. I think that that is contagious. And I think that you see it, that one corporation is igniting, another corporation is igniting, another corporation. And all of these things are absolutely in the right direction. And I think as Drake says, we have to always be in the what's next and what's next and mm -hmm. what's next. And I think that that's what a community group like 100 Black Men and Syracuse Stage uh, do a lot. I'm going to interject something before you answer, Drake. I also think that we have to name what it is that we want to change, right? And so when you look at the 21-day racial equity and habit building challenge and all of these other things, for many of us in the community, this is about the dismantling systemic racism and oppression that has been built into the fabric of many of our institutions and society. And I think we have to name that. That's At least that's the change that I hope that some folks are going to be talking about. Drake, your, your, your reaction. What do we need to, what, what, what is this about for, for Syracuse right now? I, I, I think it's a long overdue conversation, just like mm -hmm. it is for the nation. But it's, it's more than a conversation. And George, you, you mentioned all these the book clubs and readings and these initiatives that are going on, the 21 Day Challenge. The thing is, we have to make sure that we keep this front and center because I, we don't want people to see these as events. Mm -hmm. This is not an event. This this we are trying to be change agents for real for real like like not just talk about it right not, not just talk about it. so we're trying to pivot right mm -hmm. we don't want to keep doing the same old thing expecting the same result or no result at all or regret mm -hmm. we're trying to move forward because we're trying to put together a society and here in our community that's better for our children and our grandchildren and the people that live in this community maybe if we just maybe if we do these kinds of things that that intellectual drain that has been happening that affects us all may not happen so much if, if young people they can see the change in the community and say, wow, this is some place I want to be. This is some place I want to live and raise my family. So it's, it's, bigger, it's bigger than all of us, right? And then we can be the catalyst for those changes. And, and why not be a leader in the nation showing how a community of our size, of our history, and with, with the different cultures and ethnicities and, sh and, and be a model for change for everyone. I love it, right? I mean, this is, this is the work. So we've got four videos. Uh, when will the next set of videos be released? Are they released every week? No, these, these, will, be, these will run, but these will run in perpetuity. In perpetuity, okay. No. So you, do you need 100 people? Because this is 100 conversations. So are we going to get 100 people? Or is that just a, a marketing that, thing? That, that 100 conversations, because it was called, the organization's called 100 Black Men. But you know what? We will, we, we will hold as many conversations as we need to hold. I think we, we need 100. I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we gonna have to help you're gonna have to moderate some of those uh, you've been <laughs> asking me about that i know you have too so listen all right tell people what they need to do the, for the the one that's coming up this thursday the 8th what do you what do people need to do to register for that they just need to go onto our syracuse page syracusestage.org and under it says new it'll say syracuse stories 
-hmm. and right there you'll see um, Drake's wonderful face. There's a mm -hmm. wonderful um, uh, short video there, mm -hmm. and it just says register now. So you just register for for that uh, eighth, and then and then if you want to watch the videos, there's a link right below it, and says watch the videos. And those videos, like I said, they'll be there. Uh, for as long as we want them to be there and we're hoping that the next four videos will come out potentially in November. Perfect. And but while, before you go, Joanne, tell me what the status is of the season for Syracuse stage during this pandemic. Well, you know, all, all things are all kind of bizarre change is also a time for opportunity. So you had mentioned before, um, you know, Johanna Rogers and the uh, Harriet Tubman troop. So we are really honored that we invited them to do um, a gathering place, which was written by black women here in Syracuse. These are monologues written by our community, our, these powerhouse women. And we are going to be, um, that's gonna be streaming October 15th to the 25th. So we, we Black Cub came in and filmed that. And, uh, and then after that, we have uh, Tally's Folly, which is a part of our professional season. Um, and, uh, and then we're going into the Christmas season. And then we also have an Anna Devere Smith play, Twilight, uh, which is a, a piece about the LA riots happening. And this is all virtually, virtually, all virtually? We're taking things one step, as, one, one step at a time. As, as you know how we have to go, we miss our audience so much. We I miss, miss being there. Being people. So, but we want to stay connected and, um, and I always say, you know, reach out to us, uh, even, even come and join us in these community conversations in our Syracuse stories. Just come and say hi. We, we need really each other. miss Yeah. All right. Well, that's uh, SyracuseStage.org to find out more about not only what's coming up with the gathering place, but also the 100 Conversations for Change. The first four videos are out. Register for the event on the 8th, where those four people will be live, and you can ask them directly your conversations, questions, and concerns. Thank you so much, Joanne Yarrow. She is the Director of Community Engagement. And something else, uh, Joanne? Jo An education. An education. <laughs> <laughs> right? And Drake is the president of the 100 Black Men of Syracuse. And, um, Dre, quickly, uh, the Wonder, Wonder Black Men Gala this year, what's the status of that? It, it's actually going to be virtual this year. Okay. So, you know, still what's the like, date? I'm just your free plug, go. Uh, free plug? It's going to be in December. I don't actually have the date yet. But it's going to be virtual. It's happening this year. Uh, yes. It's been a major part of that. For, for, and, and I'm going to get up before Drake tries to get me to make a commitment. Thank you, Drake Harrison. <laughs> 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 Joey Yarrow, we right. thank you so much to Syracuse Stage.org for more information. Wonder Black Men, SYR.org. Take, take care of both of you.